What is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Critiques. I'm Pony Lawson and if you're new here, what we like to do is talk about tattoos. Whether you're an artist, collector, something in between, we like to talk about them all. Make sure you stick around to the very end of the video where I give you my favorite tattoo of the week, as well as a featured artist who I think you guys should be following. All right, let's not waste any more time. All right, the first tattoo is sent in from Chanel Patel. And Chanel, you sent in this Eye of Sauron tattoo on your inner arm that right away I can tell is just lacking a lot of red or a lot of fiery feel to it. There's a lot of use of yellow and a little bit of orange, but I don't think there's near as much red as there should be. Usually when we think of fire and hot things, we think of, uh, you know, fiery red or cherry red, you know, glowing, illuminating, just something that makes it feel very hot. Right now, this just kind of feels lukewarm. I think the shape here is okay for this tattoo, but if you were to have a lot more red, some kind of dynamic contrast, I think it would have a much more wow factor. And to be honest, the black in this tattoo just isn't quite as black as I'd like it to be either. This kind of just looks like it's sitting at like a 60 or 70% black. I think the black that is in this tattoo should be at 90 or 100% black. You know, uh, the blacker that you have that black, the more bright and vivid those lighter colors are going to come off. I think the artist had the right idea as far as putting in these gray wash outlines inside of that flame and color part of the tattoo. It's just missing the contrast, the dark contrast that it needs, not necessarily black or even dark red for that matter, but it needs some sort of color contrast butted up next to those gray wash lines just to really give it that vibrancy. So overall, it's just not that crazy of a tattoo. There's not that much of a wow factor. The application isn't bad, it's just not that great either. So this tattoo kind of just falls in the mediocre category. But thank you so much, Chanel, for sending that in. Next tattoo sent in is from Haley Martin. Haley, you sent in this death metal QP. Rock on. And I see the triple X on the back of your arm. You clearly love Vin Diesel movies. This has got to be baby Vin here. God damn right it is. I'm not a huge fan of the outline that you have running around the QP tattoo. I'm a fan of the thin outline, but it just doesn't seem like the structure of the baby is uh, well thought out. It kind of just seems like these lines are very loose and it, it just has the body of Play-Doh. It's like part baby, part duck, part whipped cream. I don't know what's going on. Overall, this tattoo is kind of weird altogether. There's a lot of weird things going on here. You've got the um, death metal QP baby in front with duck feet, and you've got the triple X on the back of your arm. The skulls in the background kind of give me a uh, 90s biker tattoo feel, which, I mean, it kind of works because you've got the barbed wire and the uh, bricks running through this tattoo as well. So it all kind of goes together, but it does have an overall, uh, like I said, 90s, early 2000s, biker metal tattoo feel. As far as the technical application goes, I don't think there is a great application going on here. You know, especially when we look at the triple X in the back and the barbed wire, the lines aren't that clean. Some are kind of disappearing, some aren't there at all. If I had to judge this on technical application, I'm gonna give it about a two out of 10. Uh, the design, I'm probably gonna give it about a three out of 10. And the baby smile, I'll give about a five out of 10. Yeah, just the longer I look at it, the more I don't like it, but it's metal. But rock on, Haley. Thank you so much for sending it over. Let me talk about it. The next tattoo sent in from Gage Hart is bad ass. And if you guys have been watching the channel long enough, you know I'm a huge fan of Mac Miller, and this tattoo absolutely does it justice. Gotta be one of my favorite of the series I've seen so far. This tattoo is just over the top. I'm aware of the artist. I've never got to meet him in person, but I do know this is a mash cow tattoo. Uh, he's one of the tattooers that you can tell it's his work right away as soon as you see it, just from his style. This tattoo has so much going on. Let's just start at the top and work our way down. Okay, the hair. You know I've had issues with Mac Miller tattoos in the past with hair or just portraits in general. Hair is very difficult to achieve in a portrait. And uh, when it comes to this one, I think the artist could have not even put in as much work in the hair and it would have still looked great because your eyes and attention would have been focused on the face and all the other things going on in this tattoo. However, the hair is done exceptionally well here. There's a nice combination of lino work and mag work in this hair that just really brings it all together and helps sell that believability of it being hair. Obviously, the dope on his forehead is super dope. I love the colors he chose here. The purple and the orange play so well with the green that you have surrounding it. As we work our way down to Mac's eyes, you've got this pinkish, reddish color in the eyes with this yellow streak running through it. You'll see a lot of this in Mash Cow's tattoos. If you look at his portfolio, he does a lot of that red uh, with the yellow glowing inside the eye, and it's just one of his personal touches that he puts on his work. He's got Nikes on my feet tattooed on one cheek and Kids on the other, which is a throwback to his mixtape, uh, which is a great addition to this tattoo. You know, it, it really has a lot of Mac in this 
this work. Another sign that I know it's Mash Cow's tattoo is the little bit of like oil or black that is coming out from the mouth. I think he does this almost on every single one of his tattoos, if not all of them. And again, it's just uh, one of his little signature things that he does just to let you know that it's his tattoo. And if you weren't sure that it's a Mash Cow tattoo by now, if you just look at his jawline, you'll see that he actually signed his name, Mash Cow, in the tattoo, uh, which normally I'm not a huge fan of. But since this is a graffiti style piece and he's a graffiti style artist, it just fits. So overall, super cool tattoo gauge, and I would be absolutely stoked to wear this one. Thank you so much for sending that over and let me talk about it. All right, the next tattoo is sent over from Sydney Stevenson. And Sydney, you sent in this uh, very vibrant, colorful tattoo of your cat that you got recently. I do love the vibrancy that this tattoo brings to the table. I do wish, however, that there were some more blacks used in this tattoo just to make those bright colors even brighter. The cat's face definitely has enough black, but I do wish there were some more brought in through the leaves and the flowers. The cat's bright, vivid green eyes complements very well with the leaves, and the purple lavender flower complements the sun. A nice addition to the background of this tattoo is the gray wash that you have underneath the leaves and behind the flowers as well. Once that heals out, it'll heal up to a nice gray, just giving those uh, leaves and flowers a nice pop. The cat's face seems a little out of proportion, but I'm not sure if that's because the artist maybe traced a picture of the cat that wasn't exactly head on. And I only say that because if you look at the cat's left eye and the left entire side of its face, it just seems like it's a little puffed out or a little bit bigger than the other side. But overall, you've got a nice, vibrant, vivid tattoo that is guaranteed to stand the test of time. Thank you so much, Sydney. All right, the next tattoo sent in is from Seth. And Seth, you sent in this picture of what appears to be a woman with her internals showing. I'm going to do the best I can at critiquing this tattoo, but as we zoom in and focus on some of the parts a little bit closer, they kind of just bleed together because the picture quality isn't that great. But overall, I do enjoy looking at this tattoo. I love the creativeness that the artist brought to the table, and uh, it leaves my eye moving around the entire thing. There's little things in this tattoo that I really like and I want to point out. For instance, the uh, bit of fatty tissue that is coming out of her breast. I don't know what it is about it, but I can tell that it's fatty tissue and the artist did an excellent job. The muscular tissue that's running through this tattoo as well, I can tell is muscular tissue. So again, uh, excellent job on the artist. The intestines that are on this tattoo have just enough hash lines to give it some nice depth. And the way that the artist opened her up as well uh, is very unique. Usually you'd have like a lot of skin tears or something like that, but there's just something unique and clean about the way that the artist executed that. I do like how her arm is cut off. I, I'm just uncertain if that's muscle tissue or if that's her hair coming through her arm. As we work up towards her head, this is probably the only part that I'm not a huge fan of. I'm also not a huge fan of the way her eyes are crossed, the way her hair sits over her shoulder, and the way her neck kind of gets lost behind her hair. It would be nice if you had a little bit of neckline peeking behind that hair just so her neck doesn't look very girthy. Overall, I do love this tattoo a lot. I love the creative design and I love the technical ability that the artist was able to pull off. If the artist would have put as much detail and time into the face of the tattoo as they did on the entire bottom of the tattoo, I really feel like it would have sent this one over the top. So thank you so much for sending that in, Seth. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this week's critiques. I don't think it's any surprise on which tattoo is our favorite this week. Bring it in. Come on. All right, this week's favorite tattoo was sent in from Gage Hart. Gage, thank you so much for sending in a tattoo from Mash Cow. It's nice to finally see one of his tattoos on this series. I've been a fan of his for a long time, and his style is so uniquely his own, there is no mistaking it when you see one of his out in the wild, you know exactly who made it. So for you guys out there, we'll call this a double featured artist episode, because I honestly think that this is an artist that you all should be following as well. So thank you, Gage, for sending that in and letting the world see his work. Which brings us to our actual featured artist of the episode, which is Andy Kerr who goes by underscore planet Kurth underscore on Instagram. He's got a unique style all of his own as well. His work falls along the new school category, but his outlines are superb and his saturation is on point. He's got a very cute, bright, vivid style in his tattoos that I think you guys would love. So make sure you stop by his page, give him a follow, and let him know I sent you. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week's critiques. Make sure while you're here to subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends, and more importantly, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when next week's video goes up. Until next time, Peace.